Japan-born Amin El Hassan is known for his sharp insights and engaging personality in sports analysis. His unique perspective combines his love for sports with a deep understanding of the business side, making him a sought-after commentator. In addition to his role on DraftKings Oddball, Amin is active on social media, where he shares his thoughts on current events in sports and pop culture. His ability to break down complex topics in an accessible way has earned him a loyal following. His journey highlights how new technology and innovation are re shaping how we consume sports today what's going on y'all welcome to another edition of uh us just being here at future land interviewing amazing people doing amazing things at a conference that is like none no, no other here at future land we have the man the myth the legend the man who if you're having a bad day is gonna make it just that much better i like to introduce you to this gentleman right here tell the people about yourself man my name's amino hassan and uh I make people happy with my failures, apparently. <laughs> no, and I literally told him on camera, I was telling him, like, if I'm having a bad day, I promise you. If you haven't seen the viral clip, please do. He may, He's taking the jump shot, and I promise you, it's the craziest jump shot of all time. <laughs> the, the worst thing was, he said, oh, man, every time I'm feeling down, I watch that video, it makes me smile. And I, and I said, which one? Right, he's really deep. Because I've, I've had several of these. I had... The American Ninja Warrior. I, I did the American Ninja Warrior I've seen that twice, well. <laughs> very disastrously. Uh, I the jump shot video. I've had. There's a video of one time I said the Milwaukee Bucks wouldn't win a game in the in the NBA Finals, and they ended up winning every game. And so I sat in a dunk tank in Milwaukee, and people just oh. kept dunking me in the tank of water. Uh, I have a way. I think of, I guess if you don't know what I do, I, I, I'm a sports and a yeah. commentator. So I used to work for ESPN, and then now I work for Metalark Media, which is a company that uh, Dan Levitard, you guys might remember from his show, Highly Questionable, Shout out to the Dan Levitard, that he did man. with his dad. Yeah. And then uh, John Skipper, who's the pre who was the president of ESPN, they started this new company called Metalark Media, and that's where we work. That's uh, We've got to deal with DraftKings Network. And I'm basically... Creating content, yeah. sports content. But through this life, I get opportunities to do things that I'm like, wow, that sounds cool. Let yeah. me give it a try. Yeah. And then when I do it, it doesn't go well. <laughs> and a lot of people, I think, in my position would be very embarrassed and yeah. hide. And I'm like, well, how can we make this into something? Yeah. I love how you said that because I think people don't understand the value in that of yeah. taking those moments that you like. People take blunders, bloopers, and be like, oh, no. You like I'm gonna make it into content that, that gonna make you know someone's day. Yeah, and, and and to be creative with it, and you know, before we started, you you said that you stumbled across that video because the, the comedian Kev on stage had posted yeah. it, and Kev had told me he was like, "This is what makes the internet brilliant. It's like this thing that's one of the lowest moments in your life." <laughs> Or in your public life, I should say. Yeah. You managed to turn it around and make it something even funnier and better. And I was like, that's a, a huge compliment because yeah. I'm obviously a big fan of his. But I think a lot of people just take themselves too seriously. Yeah. And uh, I remember when, when the video, the original video came out of just me shooting like that. I was, the next day I was doing a show with Rachel Nichols and, and DeMarcus Cousins. Uh -huh. And they were roasting me. And I said, <laughs> I told them, I'm going to flip it into a positive. And I said, no, you're not. You can't make that into a positive. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. All right, and I did, and I did it, I did it in like four days, I think. Because it happened on a Saturday. Yeah. On Sunday, I had the idea. On Monday, I contacted my producers to say, can we do this? We shot it on... Tuesday, uh -huh. they edited it on Wednesday, and went dropped on a Thursday, and it's been viral ever since. And it went viral, so it's like, I, I like, I think it starts with not taking yourselves too seriously, yeah. And then from there, obviously having a vision. Okay, how can I roll this forward? Yeah. And let me let me give you, let me give you a flower because you've done it not just once, you've done it many times. Yeah. How do you depict what will go viral in your opinion versus what doesn't? I wish I knew. But then I'd be <laughs> doing it all the time. It just happens. Like some, yeah. some I'll give you a great example. I this is some years ago when I was on ESPN. I uh I dudes when the Warriors were about to break the record for most wins in a season. Uh-huh. And so I, I did a sports in the hit with Kerry Champion. And I uh before we we're about to go on air, I was wearing the 72 and 10 Jordans. So I was mm. like, oh. 
Like I took a pair, yeah. a picture of the shoes, to say, "Look, this is about to be broken. They're gonna be seventy-three and nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Step Curry's or whatever." <laughs> and one dude said to me, "Hey, big bro, you want to delete that?" I'm like, "Why?" He's like, "Yo, your jeans." And I looked at him like, "What's wrong with my jeans?" <laughs> said, "All right." And so that picture starts going viral because from the angle, it looked like I had some Jinko baggy jeans, but they weren't because I, I did the side by side of like the actual TV shot. It was just a bad angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the internet didn't care. No. And so they started never roasting does. me. And then, you know, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just start retweeting because it's all funny. I, I was laughing at these jokes. Yeah. Every joke hit. Nobody did a, a bad joke. Everyone was a comedian that day. So it goes viral within like sports Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it starts to die down. Then somebody photoshopped the crying Jordan face <laughs> on the jeans. <laughs> so then it went viral again and everyone thought it was real. Like I had crying Jordan baggy jeans. I'm like, come on guys. Then it died down a little bit more. <sighs> and then Charlemagne, who's a friend of mine, yeah. came across it and he retweeted it. And that's when I realized, oh, there's a bigger Twitter outside of Twitter that yeah. I'm interacting with. And he's got the, I'm famous, famous. Yeah. I got like, I'm sport. If you watch sports, you know who I am. Yeah. He's got the, people know who I am. Right. <laughs> and let me tell you, the avalanche of, it went mega viral. And like, at that point, I didn't make anything out of it, but I just kept retweeting all the jokes. So the jokes were pretty funny. And, and yeah. I think you just have to, you got to lean in. You can't be so protective of your ego. Yeah. To the point where you're fighting against a tidal wave. It's yeah. literally like a huge tsunami coming at you. And you think, well, if I punch it really hard, yeah. no, it's not going to do anything. Not going to do anything. You're going to get, you're going to get swept away. <laughs> you might as well just surf. Mm -hmm. That's so good. And I think that that should be a lesson that we all as creators should take. And then people who are influenced, they don't, they want to have this picture perfect idea of themselves and they don't want to have any flaws, any mistakes or whatnot. But I love the fact you lean in on it. Because it's, it's not realistic. Mm. You can't control it. Like, yeah. And I'm a control freak in that I want things to be a certain way. But you have to accept that like, once you hit send, you have no control over the life it takes after that. Yeah. You thought it was going to look cool. Instead, you got mocked for it. Yeah. You thought this was an opinion that everybody shared. Instead, you found out it's an antiquated opinion yeah. or it's a very offensive opinion, whatever. So you can either spend your time fighting everybody or you can like Roll with it and figure out how do I push it forward. It's all about rolling it forward. How do I find what the next thing is? That's how I find my control. It's like yeah. to kind of, okay, you want to do this? So like uh, like improv. It's all about improv. It's all yes and. Mm -hmm. If I start a story, you just got to go with it. So if I say, hey, I'm a, I am do this with my kids a lot. I, I say, hey, okay, all right. I'm, I'm a, a mechanic and I'm in Beverly Hills yeah. and I'm a little lost. And so... I say to them, hey, uh, I'm trying to find my way to to Roscoe's. Mm -hmm. Is there Roscoe's here? And they say, no. I said, no, you can't say no. You got to say yes and. I'm like, yeah. But they changed their name to Spago's. Uh, I'm like, oh, do they still do chicken? <laughs> yeah, but like it's uh, – is it still affordable? Well, it is if you're a millionaire. And, yeah. and the idea is that you never say, no, 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 it's not affordable. No, 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 they don't do mm -hmm. Roscoe's here. It's whatever you just said, I have to build on it and keep going with it. Ah, uh, Okay. Listen, listen. You're giving y'all tidbits on how to create content. So, no, that, that's dope, man. So, let me ask you this because, I mean, we see the glory, but we know the story behind it. Mm -hmm. When will you say with the moment when you feel like things change for you as far as being – because you, by definition, you are a content creator. When you, yeah. when you say you transition into that into that mode? It's easy for me because uh, I don't – a lot of people don't know this. Before I worked at ESPN, I worked for NBA teams. I was mm -hmm. in a front office. I wanted to be a front office guy, which is – Basketball ops, that's a department that's responsible for signing players and drafting players yeah. and scouting and hiring coaches. And that was my dream. I, I got my dream job and I said, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. Yeah. And then, like, uh, we had a management ship. All the people that I worked for that I really enjoyed working for were very successful people, uh, championship caliber people. They all left. Yeah. And the people who came in were respectfully. Not good. <laughs> they, they were respectfully. They, yeah, they, they they were bad at their jobs, but also they were bad at treating people. Yeah. So I'm like, I gotta listen to this from people who don't know what they're doing, and they're gonna be disrespectful towards mm -hmm. me. So at the end of those two years, I left. I didn't know what I was gonna do. I thought I was yeah. gonna 
get a job with another team. Yeah. So I had a buddy of mine who worked for ESPN who always wanted me to do interviews with him, like do something like this. Mm -hmm. I said, I can't because the team won't allow us. We're not, if you're not like the top head honcho, yeah. you're not allowed to talk to the media. Wow. Or at least that's how it was back in my day. Now, now they, these kids, <laughs> these kids be snitching they, left and right. Like, they do whatever now. Yeah. Well, let me find out you making friends with this reporter over here. <laughs> so I said, all right, cool. I thought one of the teams that I wanted to work for might see and say, oh, he's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Let's bring him in. And instead, someone at ESPN said, hey, he's really good. Does he want to do this? Yeah. I've never done any on-camera work. I've never done any podcasts. I've never... I, I, they asked me, I said, the only thing I've ever written was college papers and scouting reports. Mm -hmm. I've never been a journalist and wrote a story about, <laughs> right. you know, this just in or whatever. So I, the only way I could describe it is imagine someone walked in right here and said, I'm from NASA. Mm -hmm. We're going to Cape Canaveral right now. Do you want to be an astronaut? I'm like, I'm not doing anything else, I guess. And, right, right, and then right. you, you find out, oh, I'm a pretty good astronaut. Like, <laughs> something I never considered for a second. Yeah. It turns out I'm, I'm actually good at it. You're so, natural. So through ESPN, I started writing. Then I did radio. Then I did podcasts. Then I did digital videos. Then I did Sports Center. Then I did The Jump, which was an Emmy-nominated show. Which yeah, I did with I'll Rachel Nichols. And, 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 and I did Sports Nation with Michelle Beadle. And and I was – that's when I was like, oh, man, I'm doing this. Yeah. But to be honest with you, when you're doing it for a company like ESPN, all I got to do is show up. They turn on the mic. They turn on the cameras. I do my thing, and then I'm gone. <laughs> when I left ESPN four years ago to start that company, Metal yeah. Life Media, with, with Dan and, and Skipper and the rest of them, I began to realize, oh, there is a there was like there's a lot of negatives of working at ESPN. A lot of it was about content control. Mm. Like I want to do this. Oh well, we can't do that. Yeah. I'm like, come on, guys, let's, let's loosen up. Now I'm in a place where I can do anything. I can do it. Mm. I I could say, hey, I want to go to uh, I want to go um, this. I shouldn't even say this one out loud because it was real, but I want to go to a haunted hotel yeah. that NBA teams think is haunted mm -hmm. and see if it's actually haunted and, and ask and interview players about their that's, that's no concept, by the way. So, and we're like, hey, sure, fine. Book the ticket, book the hotel, go. We can do all that now, but the backside of it is I don't have the machine. Uh, so like, okay, this is going to go out on this and we're going to clip these social clips for yeah. you. I don't, I've got to be more hands-on with a lot of that stuff that yeah. I never had to be before. Mm. So that's that's kind of like the struggle. Yeah. But I'd rather have the freedom and try to figure that stuff out than not have the freedom. No, that's good because you, like you said, you are the machine now. Yeah. In, in a sense, but though. And I love that the fact that a lot of people got to decide, would you, would you, would you want the credit freedom or do you want, like you said, the machine yeah. behind you? You want to play the game. You want to yeah. play the game. Yeah. No. So with that being said, let me ask you this. Uh -huh. what, would, what would you say to, to someone who wants to become a content creator? What advice should you give to them? Well, I, they just asked me that on the stage. Oh, then my there. bad. No, no, but it's, it's a good question because I think it's not a sexy answer. It's, yeah. You got to work and you got to be consistent. Mm. So consistent in terms of creating content regularly that is disseminated regularly. Yeah. So my, I, I, I also a co-founder of a podcast company. We've never been in the red the entire time. And wow. it's just a bunch of my colleagues or whatever. And we created a bunch of podcasts that have done very well. Um, and the big thing I see is from a lot of people say, oh, we're going to start a podcast. And the first thing they do, they do a photo shoot. And they got like, and everything, this is me and her back to back. <laughs> and, and like, oh, and like there's such and such. And we're going to talk about the topics no one talks yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then check back in like 10 weeks. Nothing. They stopped doing it. Because to every week to show up and create something, yeah. that's hard, That's man. hard. It's hard to do it consistently and have it come out every week the same time. Wednesdays at 9 a.m., mm -hmm. Thursdays at 8 a.m. Eastern, whatever, whatever that timing is. You're training an audience. Hey, when I'm going to work, the first thing I do is I hit play on this thing. If they hit play and it's like, oh, that was last week's episode. They start looking for something else. It's yeah. not like, well, I'll sit in silence until <laughs> you got to be ready. So, yeah. so it's it's the consistency of the work as far as putting it out, doing it. And then the caliber of content you have to have. I, I have two simple rules. It's got to be one of two things. Mm -hmm. Either I'm talking about what everybody else is talking about, but I'm talking about it in a different way. Yeah. Or I'm talking about something that's completely different from everybody else is talking yeah. about. Yeah. Right? There's only so many baby oil jokes that can be made. <laughs> about Diddy. I get it. It's funny. I, I'm guilty too, but it's like, yeah. 
you gotta you gotta find the joke that no one has made. Yeah, you can't make the same joke that everyone made, even if the joke is funny, mm. even if you get the ha ha's. So the whole idea is like, how can I find the thing that either no one's talking about? Or they're talking about it, but they aren't talking about it in this way. In this way. Yeah. Ooh. I don't think you understand. You are blessing me right now with, with just those gems you you given me. Because like I think that's a great concept that you have as a content creator. Those two things right there. Thank you. So with that being said, let me ask you this. Uh, I like to ask people legacy, right? Because mm-hmm. you have created a phenomenal one already. Right. What would you like the people to remember you for uh, going forward? I don't even know if people are going to remember me for it, but <laughs> I, I'm... I'm proud. My family's from Sudan. I'm Sudanese. I'm proudly Sudanese. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I'm proud that I did my career, both of my careers, yeah. really, first basketball and now media, where there was nobody for me to pattern or yeah. blueprint or even ask for advice or anything. And now when I, it's almost like, I turn around, Mm -hmm. I see this entire generation of young people who are incredibly driven and creative in ways that I could never have been. And I don't know how many of them know that I did this or I'm here, but I I feel like that's my legacy. That's good. To to set the stage for someone else to come in and do it even better than the way I did it. Yeah. And that's the cool thing. You know, my, my cousin Eve is the president of Dreamville and it's the same, like everything that happened for all of us happened around the same time like yeah. the early to mid 2000s and i still remember i was just hanging out at the house and not even like i have dreams of being it's just like oh you know it's cool uh, that's what i want to do that's what i yeah. want to do and we didn't have we didn't have a blueprint and we didn't have the blessings really of the the support system in the sense that our parents weren't yeah. They, they felt. I tell people all the time, like to tell my parents, I didn't want to be an engineer. I want to work in sports. <laughs> I was like telling them, I want to join the circus. Like, <laughs> like what are you talking about? Yeah, you know, it was foreign to them. It's foreign to them, and because they, they didn't have anybody like, oh, yeah. like so and so. But I know now that there are people coming up uh, that when they when they tell their parents, I want to do this. Yeah, their parents are like, oh, like, like a meme. Yeah, and, and it, it makes it a little bit. Less taboo. I that's guess. dope, man. You create you created a path for those of the yeah. future, and, and and that's the cool thing. Like these, like I said, these people coming up, and the generations behind us, they're so passionate and creative, and they're risk takers. Yeah, they're willing to put it out on the line, and that's that's the thing I'm inspired because I don't think I'm a risk taker. I I do a lot of calculator <laughs> risks. Like right. it's like, how'd you know? Like well, I looked. I made sure that the edge of the cliff, there was a smaller thing underneath, and it wasn't just a drop. But these kids are just running off. I'm like, that's crazy. Yeah. But, that's what makes it cool. That's that's where all the best stuff comes from. Yeah. Is when you don't you're not minding the line, so to speak. That's so good, man. That's so good. Listen, man. Okay, so we're a future lance. So let me ask you this. Yeah. What can we expect in the future from you? Whoa. So yeah, many, it, so many things. It's it's not and and it's like, do I want to say it out loud? Okay. I'm I'm a I'm a superstitious like that. I feel like when I talk about things. That haven't happened yet, they don't happen. Okay. And if I, I got just you. keep it to myself, I'll say this stuff that's not necessarily, well, I'll, 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 I'll give you two two things. Okay. One is I want to do, I want to be into longer form sports conversations mm-hmm. and documentaries. And then the other thing after that is not sports. Okay. And that's, that's the thing where I'm not going to get into too much detail, but I'm trying to sow the seeds of creating a third career for myself basically mm. where I part one was I worked in sports part two was I was in sports media part three is going to be nothing to do with sports so okay well it's, I got a friend of the podcast in Cleveland uh, if you're looking for partners in that just let me know <laughs> absolutely <laughs> I appreciate you man and, let, and for everyone who's watching this where can they reach you I mean I reach where can they yeah. see your, your content where can they learn more about you all that good stuff it's the cool thing of having a name like Amin it's <laughs> It's unique. It's like, it's, so it's not too many. It's at Darth Amin, D-A-R-T-H-A-M-I-N, on Instagram, on TikTok, on Twitter. I don't think it's, I need to. I need to get better with YouTube. <laughs> e- Ibrahim, I got. I got to do something with YouTube, man. Because like, I feel. I feel like that's the place where like all the money is, and I'm just like I'm here posting reels and stuff. That ain't. That's not but on on threads on like I try to have the same yeah at across everything to make it easy. Absolutely, listen. I hope you hold, you had your notepads when you watch this or whatnot. Because I know me, 
I'm going to go home with these gems. I'm going to implement them. So I hope you do the same. Guys, we're here at Futureland with just amazing entrepreneurs, innovators, creatives, and it's a phenomenal place to be. I don't know. If you're not here, I don't know why you're not here, guys. So listen, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.